Okay, hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you about a new feature I've added to JITWatch. Uh, JITWatch is a just-in-time compilation inspector for the uh, for the Java Virtual Machine, um, and most of the uh, advanced features support uh, the uh, log outputs from the Hotspot uh, Java Virtual Machine uh, JIT compilers. So. Um, this new feature allows you to look at what's going on um, in the in each of the compilers, uh, so each of the C1 compilers and each of the C2 compilers, because uh, when the, the VM runs, um, unless you've configured it otherwise, um, at least from Java 8 onwards, uh, there'll be a, at least one uh, C1 client compiler thread and uh, at least one C2 uh, server compiler thread. So I'm just going to open up a log file that I've generated earlier. If you want to know how to generate one of these log files for um, loading into JITWatch, uh, you can look at the, the JITWatch wiki on GitHub. I'm just going to process this log file now. Okay, and I'm going to open up some of the classes which were compiled. So um, this is the uh, the demo program which comes with JITWatch, make hotspot log, and um, so I'm going to look at uh, test call chain 3. So I've clicked on that, and uh, okay, it's loaded up the, uh, the try view. Uh, now the try view is a screen which shows you um, the source code uh, for your program, uh, the, the corresponding bytecode which is produced by uh, Java C, uh, and it also shows you the disassembled native code um, using the hsdis um, binary, uh, which you can drop into your um, your, 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 your JREs um, uh, directory, and that will be picked up uh, to disassemble the code if you use the, the right switches. Um, okay, so I'm going to just minimize that for now. Now the new feature I've added is under this uh, the threads button. And uh, what we can see here is uh, during this execution of the program, there was a, a single C1 client compiler thread and a one, two, three server compiler threads, uh, C2. Now, there are one, two, three, four, five different visualizations um, I've added uh, during this most recent uh, development phase. Uh, the first one uh, plots a, a, a timeline of the, uh, the, the the methods which were compiled by the, by the JIT compilers, and it plots the native sizes. So um, the, the height of each of these blocks is the uh, the amount of native code produced when a method was JIT compiled, um, and the width of the block, uh, the, the start of each block represents the time at which um, compilation began, and uh, the end of the block represents the time at which uh, compilation was completed. So I'm just going to click on the largest of these. Uh, that will then um, go up and uh, load that. Okay, and I can see that this is the class uh, Java Net URL Stream Handler and the method parse URL, uh, which takes those parameters. Um, I can see that uh, there's only one compilation of this, and this was done in the C1 client compiler level three. Uh, this tells me that uh, the size of the method in bytecode was uh, 1193 bytes, um, but the native code produced was about 30 times as big, um, at, uh, at nearly nearly 40 kilobytes of code. Uh, it also tells me that uh, this method was queued for compilation at 418 millis into the program. One millisecond later it entered the uh, compilation um, and it took 103 milliseconds of time in the C1 client compiler to uh, emit the, uh, the, the, the native code. Um, I can also click, at, uh, click on some other methods. Uh, this one here, uh, this is uh, okay. Java util comparable tim sort is the class and the method is merge low which takes four ints. Now this was compiled, I can see there are three different compilations. I can see one in the C1 compiler, here another one in the C2 compiler, and another one on a different C2 compiler thread, each one replacing the previous one as the, uh, the, the most optimized uh, version of the code. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the next uh, visualization, which is bytecode sizes. Now um, you can probably see that for each of these compilations, the bytecode size is the same. That can't change because once you've compiled your source code into into bytecode, um, that's the size of the method uh, in the in the class. But what you will see is the, the amount of native code produced by each uh, compilation will change. So the first one um, output uh, 9,048 bytes of native code by the C1 compiler. This first C2 compilation that's probably cut in uh, roughly cut in half, about half the native code. So it's output um, a smaller compiled version of the uh, of the method and, uh, and then the third one is a little bit bigger so it may have found uh, actually using a few more instructions you can get a more optimal um, JIT compiled version of this method. Now the next visualization um, is expansions so you can see each uh, each compilation is plotted as a um, 
I suppose it's a um, trapezium uh, of some sort. Uh, so the uh, the height on the left hand side is the is the byte code um, size, and the height on the right hand side is the native size. So I can see the the, the biggest expansion was in um, the uh, Java Net URL stream handler parse URL method, which went from 1193 bytes of byte code uh, when it was an interpreted method to 38, um, nearly 39,000 bytes of, of native code. Um, now, the, the next visualization is timings. Uh, each compiler thread has been split into, uh, into two parts, um, one marking the timings when the method entered the uh, compiler queue, uh, and one when compilation started. Um, and let's look at this one here. This is, okay, this is a, a sun uh, net ww parse util um, class and the method is encode path. So uh, this is when it entered the uh, it was when it's queued for compilation at 936 millis and almost instantaneously uh, also logged as 93 millis that's when compilation started and 39 milliseconds later uh, the, the native code was emitted and stored in the code cache and that uh, took 336 bytes of byte code and output uh, nearly 3000 bytes of native code. Uh, so look at another one there. Um, okay, here we are again with the, the uh, comparable Tim sort merge low. This particular compilation on the, the C2 compiler thread um, took 65 milliseconds and output um, nearly 4,600 um, bytes of native code. Now, uh, the uh, what, what this might tell you is um, by looking for lines which don't go um, which don't go vertically from compilation queuing to um, compiler start say these ones here, this means that they were waiting around in the compiler queue because they were queued but it took some time for them to reach the actual start of the queue or the head of the queue to, uh, to actually get the compilation started. So this is where the, the final visualization comes in, compiler queues. Uh, so these look a little bit like um, skylines and uh, what it shows is over time the, the length in, of the compiler queue uh, in number of uh, tasks waiting to actually uh, enter the compiler. So you can see on the C1 uh, compiler thread. I'm just going to zoom in so we can fill the screen. Um, yes, yeah, so on the C1 compiler thread, you can see that at the at the highest, uh, the length of the queue is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven tasks um, waiting uh, at the longest, waiting to to actually be compiled. And um, this particular one is the the get value method on a, a hash map um, node in a class. Uh, this was only five bytes of code. Um, sounds like it might be, oh, it's, an, it's an accessor, isn't it? So for five bytes of bytecode, that produced 272 bytes of native code. And you can see here, actually, this is um, uh, it's moving down the, uh, the, the queue to, to the front of the queue uh, until the compilation starts. If I look at the timings, yeah, I can see that's when it entered the queue, and that's when it was actually um, compiled. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to load another log file from a, a longer program. So I'm going to open a JIT log uh, from uh, running the Eclipse IDE. So obviously that's a, a big heavy program, um, lots going on just to start it up. It has to um, execute a, a, a huge amount of code just to get the IDE up and running. And then as you uh, do more operations within the IDE, um, more methods will become um, hot and will be uh, JIT compiled. OK, so that's now completed. I'm going to go back to my, my threads view. So now, um, you can see, uh, I'm going to have to zoom in to actually really see the uh, the detail. Uh, it kind of looks like a, uh, almost like a sound sample. Um, okay, so lots of activity on the, uh, the C1 client compiler thread, as you'd expect with a tiered compilation. Uh, these are methods which are uh, partially optimized, um, and uh, if they're then uh, found to uh, just to um, reach the right thresholds, they'll be um, further compiled by the server compilers to, to access those more advanced optimizations. I'm just going to click on one of these here, and I can see. Okay, this is a this is a big method. It's a big bytecode method. 2,346 bytes of bytecode producing um, 21k of, of native code, and this is part of the uh, the, the internal Xerxes uh, XML um, code. There are actually five compilations of this particular method. Um, we can look at the the bytecode sizes. Yes, this was a big bytecode size method to begin with. I look at the expansions. Uh, you can see. Yes, this is one of the biggest expansions. I'll zoom out to see if there was a, a bigger expansion. Okay, yes, there's one method which was a bigger expansion, and this was, um, okay, java.text.decimal format apply pattern. This went from 
1591 bytes of bytecode to um, 37656 bytes of native code. That's one of the biggest um, uh, uh, native methods I've, uh, I've, I've encountered using uh, using Jitwatch. So let's uh, learn a little bit more about that. So I'm going to um, zoom in to that. I'm going to look at the uh, the timings. Okay, so I can see it entered the uh, it entered the the, the compilation state um, pretty much straight after, actually two milliseconds after it was queued, it started to be compiled. It took um, nearly a third of a second, um, 294 milliseconds it took to output that 37656 bytes of native code. Um, apply patterns sounds like maybe it uses um, that's regular expressions, maybe there's a lot of loop unrolling that goes on in there to take that 1591 bytes of, um, of bytecode and turn that into nearly 38k of native. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset that. You can see that some of these uh, some of these markers are in red, and if I click this uh, checkbox here, only failed compilations. Uh, this is now only showing me the compiler compilation tasks which were queued for compilation, but were actually uh, abandoned um, before they uh, before they entered the compiler. So usually uh, the reason for that is is stale task, and when a task is is determined to be hot and queued for compilation. Uh, certain counters um, which track uh, if it's still being used um, will decay and if it decays past a certain point then the JIT compiler will say well yes I thought you were a hot method queued you for compilation but actually no you're not I'm going to use my resources elsewhere and I'm going to abandon this compilation task and um, one thing I can see if I switch from timings of these failed compilations to the, uh, the compiler queues then I can see actually here um, they, they sort of line up uh, you get a lot of abandoned tasks when the compiler queues are, are very long. Um, if I if I zoom in, now this is uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, at the same point in time, all of the compiler threads, the C1 and the three C2 server compiler threads, all had um, reasonably long queues of things waiting to be uh, to be compiled. So. Looks like uh, all of the the JIT resources in the VM were were busy at this time, and lots of tasks were backing up. And let me just do a quick count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty. I mean, I would say that's probably getting off for sort of um, thirty-five to forty uh, tasks uh, in the queue. If I just click on one of them at the top, um, maybe I need to allow this to be zoomed in vertically as well. Okay, this is um, Java IO byte array input stream. Um, mark supported and that compilation failed, no end method emitted. So this is one of the tasks which was queued for compilation um, and uh, and actually it was abandoned. Um, now two bytes of bytecode, that's, uh, that's, that's a very small method. I'm going to um, bring up the, uh, the try view now for this particular method. Um, okay, so here we can see um, that all this does is return true. So uh, it puts um, um, iconst1 uh, and then I return. So yeah, that just returns uh, a boolean true. So interestingly, it was comp it was scheduled for um, for compilation, but uh, actually uh, it never made it into the compiler. That uh, compilation task was abandoned. Okay. Um, so just wrapping up. Um, one thing you might want to consider, going back to this screen, uh, compiler queues. If you visualise uh, your hotspot log and see that your JIT compilers were all busy at the same time, obviously this one wasn't quite as busy, but if you think uh, perhaps your program performance was impacted by their lack of um, available uh, JIT resources, then if you have more hardware threads available, you might want to experiment with uh, increasing the number of, uh, of, of JIT compiler threads available to the VM. Now, obviously, that is uh, um, something which the ergonomic VM tries to um, optimize for you, tries to set to the right value, but you may find uh, that um, experiment with that value gives you, gives you um, changes in performance which might help you. Okay, um, JITWatch is an open source and free project. Uh, you go to github.com slash adoptopenjdk slash JITWatch. And if, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is Chris Who Codes. Thanks a lot.